In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Today is Trinity Sunday where we realize that God has revealed himself as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. As is reflected several times in our uh, standard liturgy that we use. This is the one holiday where the Lord himself seems to want to talk about himself. It's almost always about you and me and about what we need and how he'll get us safely to heaven. But this is the one holiday where we ask the question, who is God? And exactly, for that matter, what is he? And I mean the Lord himself. And simply put, as you've heard several times, the Father is God, the Son is God, and the Holy Spirit is God. But as the Athanasian Creed says and over and over, and you'll hear in just a minute, it is not three gods, but one. So, so three equals one. That may sound like a third grade math problem, but uh, that's it. Theologically speaking, three equals one. And that's where we get the expression, the tri-unity. But no one wants to say tri-unity, so we simply say uh, trinity. I don't know, for you who are lifelong Lutherans at least, there are some churches that are actually named uh, Saint Trinity. Now I don't know of any saint whose name is actually Trinity. And I figured it out. It's in Latin, Sanctus Trinity, which means the Holy Trinity, but for them it meant <laughs> Saint Trinity. Now as I said, simply put, the Father is God, the Son is God, and the Spirit is God. But that doesn't mean that for you and me that it's all perfectly understandable. Oh, hardly that. Simply put, but not understandable at all. And I just want to tell you that if I don't fully understand God, and fully understand what makes him tick. It's okay with me. The way I look at it is the Lord is so big. He is so complicated. He is so overwhelming. I say, now there is a God that I can count on. I can't even understand him. I can count on him in particular for my salvation because I can't even explain fully who he is. Now sometimes in the Bible, the, the uh, Trinity appears without even being named Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And the perfect example of this is the baptism of Jesus. The Son, of course, is in the water in the person of Jesus. The Spirit is the dove that's descending from heaven. And the Father is the voice from heaven. So there they are, the three persons of the Trinity, all interacting, but yet being separate and entirely different. Now many benedictions in the Bible and in the life of the church are threefold. And the most obvious threefold is when we have, when we have, uh, at a baptism, I baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Even in the Old Testament, long before Jesus came into the world, the uh, instructions that were given to the high priest Aaron were, here is how you give a blessing upon the people. It's called the uh, Aaronic blessing, not, not the ironic blessing, but the Aaronic blessing. It says the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. 
there are all three persons of the Trinity are. That's the blessing of Aaron. Or one of my favorite passages, and it was brought up in Bible class this morning, Isaiah 61, verse 1 says, The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me. Now that's five words in the Hebrew, but the Spirit of the Lord God is the Spirit, right? The Spirit of the Lord God, that's God the Father, and the Spirit of God the Father is upon me. And who is the me? Jesus. So there in the space of five Hebrew words, you have all three persons of the Trinity. Now we have three words, three readings today that are don't really talk so much about the Trinity, but they're still trying to say something about who the true God is. It says in Proverbs, for example, that if you want real wisdom, the wisdom of the true God, you have to understand that knowledge of God as triune is the epitome of wisdom. And it goes on to tie Father, Son, and Holy Spirit to all creation. And that Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are all reflecting the glory of God in God's created world. Then there's a reference in Acts 2. The essence of God in this case is linked to his purpose. And his purpose is the death and resurrection of Jesus for our salvation. And the third reading from the Gospel of John. Jesus the Son is linked to his Father in heaven and he's linked to the eternity of the Father and linked to the power of the Holy Spirit. So Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, according to John, are all conspiring together for our salvation. Finally, it comes out that as you hear all these lessons and the message of uh, Trinity Sunday, that everything that is said about God's name is about God himself. And that's why the Bible says, at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. That name is special. And he even says that this holy one, a carpenter from Nazareth, Jesus e existed even before Abraham, who had been dead for about 1900 years by then, but before Abraham was, I am, Jesus said. So he is, comes way before even, uh, even Abraham. So uh, then uh, what this uh, basically means to us, if you know the Trinity, if you know Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, then you know God, God himself. And, of course, that means that God is everything to you. I am nowhere without Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, that one God. Now, we know God is wise, do we not? We know that God is just plain smart, that he's super powerful, that he's super glorious, that he's super majestic that he's super eternal and he's altogether complicated but in the season of trinity we say we don't know exactly how but we know all that and traditionally the church has taken good uh, great pride in this yeah, we think we understand the trinity and they've written dozens of books and hundreds and thousands of pages and said Greg look what we know we think we have God figured out I don't have God figured out at all I just count on him for my salvation yes we uh, know all about God do we not but Trinity Sunday asks an even more important question you may know all about God 
But do you know God? If you don't know the gospel of God's grace, you have not begun to know who God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit is. You don't know the gospel, you don't know him. How about things like this about God? God is loving, as John said to the little ones. God is love. God is compassion. God values you more than his own life, as this thing on the wall uh, shows you. God is kind. God is patient. God is understanding. And as he showed in the death of Lazarus, God cries when one believer dies. God is forgiving, 70 times 7 forgiving. God is merciful, God is tender-hearted. There's one little scene that's so clear to me from Mount Sinai. God gave the Ten Commandments and he, as he gave them, he rumbled and roared at the people. And the mountain shook and even caught fire. It was all so frightening when the people saw God displaying his glory. And God interrupted the whole scene. And he said, the Lord is the Lord. That's who I am. And he says, I am a God who is merciful and gracious. Did you hear me? Yes, I asked you to live according to the commandments and so on. But in my heart of hearts, I am a God who is merciful and gracious. I am slow to anger. I don't fly off the handle at my people at all. Uh, instead, I am abounding to the brim in undying love and faithfulness. I am forgiving. You know, there are three Hebrew words in the Old Testament. Uh, for this for sin and they're translated respectively iniquity transgression and sin now here it says in this passage that the Lord in his mercy forgives iniquity transgression and sin so they're all covered are they not do you know me says the Lord do you really know me? Not just a few random thoughts about me. Remember once again when Jesus' friend Lazarus died. Jesus cried. And when you see Mia, will you cry? If crying were a sign of weakness, you'd try not to cry. But crying in these circumstances like this is not a sign of weakness. With the loving Savior that we have, crying over someone we love is the most godlike thing you could ever do. Amen. <laughs>